Solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Joe learned another way to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. It's a pretty slick method and works pretty well, but it's very different from the graphing method, the factoring method, and even the quadratic formula. Because all three of these methods require solving the equation for zero on one side for the equation to be in standard form. Completing the square requires just the opposite to move the C or number by itself to the other side of the equal sign. That 8, for instance, would be moved over to the other side of the equation. So this equation here, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0, which we could definitely solve using graphing or the quadratic formula, and maybe even by factoring, has to be transformed from the standard form by moving this positive 8 over to the right side of the equal sign, which is just the opposite of what we did for the other three methods discussed. And so here we have it, x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. What we need to create on the left side is called a perfect square or a trinomial square that can be factored into two identical binomials. This is an algebra tile diagram of a perfect square or a trinomial square. The factors of this square are quantity x plus 2 and quantity x plus 2, here shown at the top and left side of the diagram. In completing the square, the things we need to deal with are the x squared term and the x or linear term. The x term that forms this perfect square is 4x. We put two x's here on the right side and the other two of the four x's here below the x squared. In the completing square method, we need to adjust the left side of the equation to fill in the square created by these x squared and x terms. In this case, 4, represented by the four little yellow squares in the lower right of the diagram. Okay, back to the problem at hand. x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. This x term, 6x, needs to be separated into two equal parts, 3x and 3x. Now we're ready to start making the diagram of the square. The x squared term goes here, the blue, big blue square. Then half of the 6x's, or 3x's, go here on the right side and the other half of the 6x's or 3x's go here below the x squared term. Now we can look at this diagram and figure out how many little squares we would need to make this diagram a perfect square. It's 3 by 3 so it will take 9 of the little squares to fill in the square which is literally completing the square. This tells us that we must add 9 to the left side of the equation to make that left side a perfect square. And according to the golden rule of algebra, we need to add 9 to the right side as well. So now we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 on the left and negative 8 plus 9 on the right side. The right side simplifies to 1, so we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 1. On the left side, the perfect square trinomial can be rewritten in the factored form as quantity x plus 3. We can next simplify to quantity x plus 3 squared equals 1. We now are ready to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Our result is that x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. We solve for x by subtracting 3 from both sides, so x equals negative 3 plus or minus 1. We can write this in set notation as x equals negative 4 and negative 2. You can and should check your solutions by plugging them back in for x into the original equation. Let's look at this one. It's x squared minus 12x minus 54 equals 0. To start completing the square, Joe moves the minus 54 to the right side of the equation, and here it is transformed to x squared minus 12x equals 54. Next, he takes the x term, negative 12x, and separates it into two equal parts. Each one is negative 6x. From here, he sets up the algebra tile diagram with the x squared term in the upper left corner. We can see the negative 6x's on either side of the x squared term to the right and below. Then he fills in the numbers to complete the square. These numbers or little squares can only be positive since a positive times positive is positive as well as negative times negative. There are 6 by 6 or 36 of the, of the little yellow squares. This completed square represents quantity x minus 6 times quantity x minus 6. 36 is added to each side to get the perfect square on the left side. This simplifies quantity x minus 6 squared equals 90. The next step is to take the square root of each side. 
This simplifies to x minus 6 approximately equals plus or minus 9.5 since the square root of 90 is really an irrational number but very close to 9.5. Moving the minus 6 to the other side we have x equals 6 plus or minus 9.5 separating into two parts we have x equals 6 plus 9.5 and x equals 6 minus 9.5 this simplifies to x equals 15.5 or x equals negative 3.5 and here is Joe's answer in set notation Joe will complete the square to solve this quadratic equation x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 0 the first thing Joe does is move the 6 to the right side where it becomes negative 6 so we have x squared plus 2x equals negative 6 since Joe has two x's he has just one for either side of the x squared algebra tile next Joe completes the square by filling it in with the little squares in this case just one little square this tells him that he must add one to both sides of the equation to have a perfect square on the left side this simplifies to quantity x plus 1 squared equals negative 5. The problem is now that when Joe takes the square root of both sides, the square root of a negative 5 is not a real number, so there are no real solutions to this quadratic equation. While Joe pretty well has gotten the hang of completing the square, he asked his teacher if there was a quicker way he could do it without having to draw the algebra tile diagrams every time. Let's look at this equation, x squared minus 10x minus 32 equals 0. Joe's teacher told him to take the coefficient of the linear or x term and divide it into two equal parts by dividing by 2, which simplifies to negative 5. Now he takes that number, in this case negative 5, and squares it, and negative 5 squared is 25. So 25 is the number that needs to be on the left side to create a perfect square. First, what Joe forgot to do earlier is to take that minus 32 on the left and move it over to the right, so he'll do that now. So now we have x squared minus 10x equals 32. Now he completes the square by adding 25 to both sides of the equation. So here it is, x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 32 plus 25. The right side simplifies to 57, so we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 57. On the left side we simplify in the perfect square quantity x minus 5 squared. Now he takes the square root of each side of the equation. This becomes x minus 5 equals plus or minus 7.5 rounded to the nearest tenth. Moving the negative 5 from the left side over to the right side, this becomes x equals 5 plus or minus 7.5. Now in two parts, this is x equals 12.5 or x equals negative 2.5. And here is the answer in set notation, Joe's final answer. Another advantage of using the rule of taking one half of the x term coefficient and squaring instead of building algebra tile diagrams is that you can take an odd number like this, negative 3, and take half of it and square it. To draw an algebra tile diagram, you would need to have even numbered coefficients of x. This coefficient, negative 3, divided by 2 is negative 1.5. And squaring negative 1.5, we get 2.25, so 2.25 is the number we add to x squared minus 3x to get a perfect square and he can move on from there to find the solutions to this equation. Joe remarks that although this method is a pretty slick way to solve quadratic equations, it really is no easier than the quadratic formula and certainly a lot harder than graphing when a graphing calculator is available. Why learn to do this anyway? Joe's teacher tells him that there are two very important things about learning to complete the square. First, learning to complete the square helps with understanding conics later in the algebra 2 year. Especially Joe noticed that the x minus binomials move the solutions to the right and the x plus binomials move the solutions to the left. Also the skill of completing the square is useful in pre-calculus and in calculus. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations by Completing the Square. Thanks for viewing.